In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. podcast of bundablog.com the home of whatever the podcast that kisses its dog duke's butt in the middle of introductions to its podcast i am your sappy host yeah who loves his adorable dog duke steven with me today is the cohortress of the midnight hounds herself danielle how are you danielle i'm great currently xena duke and rusty are in the lower cozy caves asleep. Duke is above, perched upon the our pillows. The lower cozy caves. Yeah, they're the lower. Uh, That's our world, people. We live in higher and lower cozy caves. Yeah, the bed is the upper cozy cave, and the lower cozy caves are below. Um, exactly. Welcome to the Vundacast. Um, if you want to see our dogs, you can see them on Instagram at Midnight Hounds. Our uh, our podcast slash website is also at Vundablog on Instagram. Um, exactly. Danielle is actually been tearing the internet a new butthole this week. Yeah, but I don't want them to know my my Tumblr. Well, Just know it, that it's, I it's on vulnerable.com if you want to do your research. Uh, yeah, if you really want to look it up. It's there. Yeah. But she's been schooling anti Raylos, like. No, 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 not anti Raylos. Anti Last Jedi people. Anti Last Jedi people. Yes. Okay. Some of them are Raylos. Some of them. I don't know. Yeah, some of them were Raylos, actually. Some of them were Raylos once. No. They were Raylos once. And then he, no, they betrayed them themselves are, and went to the dark Some side. of them are, are, are Raylos, and they're in a specific, specific group I'm in that I'm really beginning to question why I'm there still. But, you know, what are you going to do about it? That's internets for you. Uh, me and Danielle are super cool, dynamite insane. Yeah, How man. has your uh, week been since Let's I've read be your player glum review? Let's be honest. Why are you being we honest? We just got into an argument, so I'm recovering, but I'm good. Well, it was a very stupid argument. It was a stupid argument. Like many As of our usually, arguments are our stupid. arguments are just stupid arguments that we just gotta keep on arguing about. Because we love each other so much that we have to just find stupid things to argue about because for big things, we get along usually pretty. Like at a 90. 95% level, I'd say. 95%? Is that too high? 90%? No, cool. I think 95%. That's how Ray and Kylo Ren would We're be. We're so cheesy! They would just be over-fighting about stupid shit. We're so cheesy! Like, don't leave your lightsaber in this drawer. This is for forks. You bitch. Lightsaber's like a space fork. Deal with it. Space fork. Obviously, it's more like a space knife. I'm yeah. being ridiculous here. You're being ridiculous. Um, so I had a cool thing happen to me today. You did? On Twitters. Yes, down my Twitter, at Son of Escadera. Oh, that's right. Um, I, uh, tweeted, uh, Gabriel Luna, because he has just been cast in James Cameron's new, finally, a follow-up to Terminator 2 finally. by James Cameron. Finally. is coming out, and we are gonna have a fucking Hispanic Terminator for It's pretty once. exciting, actually. A Mexican-American Terminator. And I posted a picture of me from when I was T2 for Halloween, when I was about five, six years old. And I told him my experience of how excited I was to see him as a, uh, as a T-800, perhaps. And he liked your post. And liked your post. that Danny Trejo should be the street punk that mm -hmm. he, like, rips off his arm. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And he should actually, Danny Trejo should just have his hair exactly like uh, Bill Paxton and like the bright blue mohawk. Just because has Danny Trejo ever like 
had a bright blue Moku? No. There we go. Come on. We gotta add it to his first list. Mm-hmm. Um, today me and Danny watched uh, the Very Chill Day today. We did. And we watched uh, a Bollywood film. Yeah. I can't remember if we talked about Boggy. We did a little podcast. bit, I think. I think we talked about it a little bit. But me and Danny like crazy silly high budget Bollywood action movies. Well, let me let me put let me put this into perspective. I lived in Trinidad when I was a little girl, because I am half Trinidadian and half Jamaican. And in Trinidad, you know, there's a very large um, Indian population, like Indian and you know my, migrants who came over many many years ago and stayed and obviously shaped you mm-hmm. know the culture. So. There was always Bollywood movies on um, in my house when I was young. Like they had on like the weekends, I think they would do like Bollywood movies and stuff. And obviously, this was the eighties. That's I'm old, but the late eighties people. But um, they would have. They tended to have the very romantic uh, Yash Chopra, who's a very famous Indian director. If you don't know who Yash Chopra is, who recently died in like twenty twelve. And they would always have his kind of movies on, which his kind of Indian movies are the ones, if you make fun of Indian movies, you probably know because they're the ones where people are twirling around in full sari and outfit in the middle of the Swiss hills, the mm-hmm. Swiss Alps, singing and hiding behind trees and like, you know, but, um, but I always loved those movies. I really did. Like I, I found them, I, like, I really was entertained by them. I was a little kid and I liked them. And so now... I kind of get to share my kind of love for them with Steven. And luckily, Steven is really into the action ones, um, you know, because he's not as into the romance ones, but he's never into as much as into the romance ones. But Not the pure romances. Not the pure romances. The good thing about a Bollywood movie is that they are all a romance. So it doesn't matter if you're watching an action movie Green about a bank thriller. heist. This oh, movie's yeah. about prison. Wait. Wait, I love He's story. in love. Look at him smelling that scarf exactly. lovingly. He's going to prison now. No scarves in prison. <laughs> wait, wait. I smuggled in a prison scarf. I smuggled in a prison scarf. Okay. <laughs> exactly. It's so all Bollywood movies um, are known for two things. There's always a love story in them, and it's usually the center of the story, like or it drives the main plot. Um, and then two, they always have musical numbers. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, in a romantic movie, this makes a little more sense, but it is quite jarring for people to watch an action movie, and all of a sudden, in the middle of it, they stop, and it's like, do 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 and like some beat yes. pops up, and then they start dancing, and, but it's, but I love it. I think I it's think, really fun. I think Dawn 2 did it most elegantly, yes. because... They like put it in the in club. A club scene. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh man, when Don goes I to the like club, Khan, he owns that club. But I won't lie. I feel like Shah Rukh Khan's movies have the smoothest transitions into musical numbers. Hmm. Like I've watched many. They're less fantastic. Shah Rukh Khan is like the biggest one of the biggest Bollywood guys ever. Like he's internationally famous. That's what's so funny about America. We're so ethnocentric and we're so like obsessed with our own shit that we don't appreciate, like, other things. And obviously, I, you know, I have the virtue of not being so ethnocentric because I wasn't originally from America, and I learned outside my culture. But, like, seeing people here, I see, you know, I know there's a resurgence of anime, but that's kind of become, you know, the the one thing people know. And K-pop now, which is interesting. But, like, a lot of people don't, like, really know or appreciate Bollywood movies. They think that they're silly and goofy. And, I mean, yes, they are silly and goofy. But I feel like, honestly... Looking at them and watching them formulaically, there are no silly and goofy than some of the silliest blockbusters yeah, yeah. we have here. Like, in, in fact, they're they're more earnest. They're in more earnest in their silliness. And more playful. Yeah, exactly. Like, they know, you know, like, we watched this movie today called Krish. Krish is a superhero movie. Yes. Um, it starts Hithrik Roshan. Which you wouldn't know. No. Like, watching the you first wouldn't know minutes. start watching the first, like, no. 30 minutes. Maybe, maybe 20 minutes. 15 minutes. minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. You but like sure. what's the, and but and, and obviously you know like they don't have hundred million dollar budgets, but frankly like you watch this movie and you know you're seeing kind of silly wire work or whatever, but they always have a sense of like really earnest fun about them that I feel like this I enjoyed myself. This movie is almost three hours long. Sure. It's three hours uh, long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently a six point five million dollar budget when you when you transfer it over to American, American dollars. So that was a very high budget. 
at the time when it was made in 2006 it was like the highest budget um bollywood movie ever made and they apparently this was also i read this fact today that it was the first movie to get all the payments for sponsorships up front mm -hmm. so apparently i guess it's a thing in india where they're like if you don't put the coffee ad in the movie I'm not cutting you a check. Like, they want to see the results before they cut the check. No, no, no. Show, show me how it formed his childhood <laughs> like, and his values. I want to see what you did first. But in this movie, it appear, apparently behind the production, they actually got the upfront, which is more an American-style thing. Because in America, that's what happens. People pay upfront. You know, Starbucks pays. Well, usually what, whatever. what people who or independent movie people try to do is they try to sell away all of the foreign rights or a certain amount of the foreign rights mm -hmm. of the film to different distributors so that they have enough money to finance the film and then they would keep the profits they would get domestically or in the territories that they didn't need to sell to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that would be their, their profit base. Yeah. Um, in this situation where they're trying to do you know, a more lucrative movie, because in the, the article we read, it also said that there was, like, a toy line that they put out with yes, the movie. they were very much masks, trying to push... Like, they were really making this... This, because it was so expensive, like, they wanted product. to make sure... Yeah, they were like, people have to know this movie, people have to make money off this movie. But what's really kind of funny is you can totally tell that since this was, like, the first time they were doing this, this experiment where they paid up front, they really wanted to make sure these guys got their money's worth, because... It's very amusing in the movie how the product placement is so jarringly, like, overt. Mm -hmm. Like, they're in this beautiful, rustic setting in the Swiss Alps. Everything around them are these earthy tones. Everything and brown super pastoral. And russet and pastoral. And then all of a sudden she has this bright red and yellow tide bag yeah. that she's pouring in the perfect angle it's almost... so that you see the Tide logo and then they have like another one called Born Vita mm -hmm. which I guess is like a like a, a British or ca it's like a British drink like Ovaltine, like Ovaltine like chocolate. Milo chocolate yeah. thing and they had it like sitting perfectly on the table and he uses it as a bribe and dialogue and it, there for yeah exactly so. like it's really funny yeah. because you could tell I knowing that fact you could tell they were like we're gonna make sure you can yeah. see your product well, in it this almost, movie it almost felt like they were like well, remember in Schindler's List when all of a sudden there was that little pop of color? Yeah. Let's do that, but with the ads. Let's do that. And it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny because it actually kind of reminded me of the Truman Show. Remember the Truman yeah. Show when she would do like the, try new chocolate drink. To, like it reminded me of that. And, and, and it was, it, that made it funny. But like Krish is really a fun movie. And it's got action and it's got romance. Um... It stars Hithrik Roshan, who's another really famous uh, Bollywood actor who's very handsome, and Priyanka Chopra, which you guys know now because she's actually crossed over into the American market and she made that, uh, what is that movie, that FBI show, Quantico, or something like that, right? She was on that show? That she was on that, I think that show's still going. I don't know if they canceled it. I oh think she's God. just doing really well, but she's beautiful. Yeah, so like art for Chris 3, there's an evil chick in Chris 3. What? Anyway, so we love Bollywood action movies. I love them. I really do like, unironically like them. Like, I'm not watching them just to be ironic. Part of me, there's probably, like, a 10% of me that's irony, but the other, like, 90% of me is really just having a great time. And I also do love Indian romantic dramas. I think they're the best. They, If you want to cry, watch an Indian romance drama because they always end so tragically, and you're always like, oh, no, when are they going to get together? Oh, <laughs> the other thing, too, is, you know, Indi Indian Bollywood movies, they tend to be very long. No, none of them are shorter than at least two hours. Like, two hours and 30 minutes and three hours max. They really pack a lot in this movie. So when you're watching Krish, it's so funny to me because it's like, there's so much in this movie and they only spent six million American dollars. But I feel like, like there you are get... such elaborate sets. Yes. There's hundreds of extras hundreds dancing. Hundreds of extra dancing. There's foreign locations. There's different um, fight scenes in different locations. Different All of weapons, them dynamic. Props, costumes. Like, I mean... By the end of the movie, he <laughs> runs in super speed. Yes. Like, just as fast as the Flash ever could. He... 
goes into a total Cirque du Soleil pirate routine. Yes. He saves children from a raging inferno. Five, four children at the same time. Five in total. Five once in that total. last girl that finally last, yes. was saved. She was hiding under the bleachers. Why couldn't she just hang out with everyone else? Oh, I see what they were going for. This is the Krish poster side by side with the Daredevil, Daredevil poster. poster. That makes sense. They thought the Krish was like, that's a, better you know, than that, I think that's the one thing that I know about Bollywood movies that people tend to kind of frown on is that they are obviously rip-offs of derivatives, like, yeah. Der, yeah. I, yeah, I don't want to say rip-offs. Derivatives of like six or seven American movies. So I know for some people that bothers them. But really, it's not, it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal and I feel like so much of but American ri- cinema is a rip-off of its own yeah, self and a derivative it was, of its own self. The, the way this movie literally laid out its plot, it was so entertaining. Yes. Because the first hour is like this like very pastoral like romance where he meets a girl who falls out of the sky and he uses his Tarzan Dr. Doolittle powers to save her. And then the second part of this movie is like, oh, country boy goes to the city... And look at what a good person he is. And then they set up the whole like intrigue with the with like the other guy who's gonna take the superhero identity. And then we finally get an origin story and it's like E. T. but cooler. And then he gets to play his own dad. Like this movie just keeps on going and going. It has a fucking super villain at the end who wants to be a god and soliloquizes. About the the main one of the biggest plot points of the movie is that the supervillain and his dad were trying to create a computer that could see the future, so that this guy could become a god. They're Lex Luthor, dude. Um, there's just so many fun concepts, and like, literally as the movie's going on, I'm like, oh, this is the part where he's like Batman, and oh, this is the part where he's like Superman, and oh, this is the part. Where yep. they're doing the Matrix exactly. thing, which is fun as hell to see a dude in a Matrix coat, yes. like jumping and fucking throwing canisters to stop bullets exactly. from hitting the love of his life. Like that's totally dope. No, it's super fun. Like that. That's what movies are supposed to be about. It doesn't have to be all like tearful longing and stuff. Like you can just have a good time. So I like Krish. I'm excited now that we have like three more Krish movies. Yes. To watch hypothetically. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just say give, give, give move, give foreign movies a chance, guys. Like I know some people only want to watch a certain kind of foreign movie. You know? There's so many different movies to watch, and I, I think that it's like, especially like it's the same thing with like Chinese big budget movies. They're they're really entertaining and they're beautiful. And the truth of the matter is, is that I think that oh, the fact that they have so many bodies to do is really there a cool pre-hole? things. Hey man. Did they, I'm sorry. You mean a prequel? Cole Melgaia with the little alien? No, I don't... Th- is that the alien? Oh, is that the alien? Yeah, I think they made a oh, prequel about his dad with the weird alien. Oh, dad. Oh. oh, my God. There's, like, the coolest, like, alien in the middle for, like, five seconds. Cool is a strong word. But the fact that you just sprinkle yeah, in an alien aliens, out of, like, yeah. a Spielberg alien out of nowhere, that's Like awesome. I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in this movie. But I think... Give it a chance. Because I think one of the cool things about Indian, like, Bollywood movies, the same thing with, like, Chinese cinema, is that they have... So many bodies there, they can do some really cool sequences where they just have yeah. tons of people running around and doing awesome things. And I, I really enjoy that about like those mm-hmm. movies. But anyway, so like moving on, I think we talked enough so, about Chris. Go see Chris. Go if... see it. Just watch it on Netflix. No, no, no. Go buy a plane ticket. <laughs> go to Bollywood Avenue. Watch Chris at the Bollywood store. Mm-hmm. Do it. Um,. We also watched, in the cinemas, we watched a movie that's getting a lot of accolades right now. Getting Come a lot on. of praise. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, a movie that, if you said Krish in the middle of this movie, you people would be die. like, shut the fuck up. You would die. Um, I'm talking, of course, about the new John Krasinski film, A Quiet Place. A Cut Quiet to Place. Trailer to A Quiet Place. Yes.
PG-13. Be the first to see it Thursday night. And we're back. Whoa, that was intense. Unfortunately, we're going to have to talk at regular volume for this review. You know what's funny because is... Because if we did a quiet review, this podcast would suck. <laughs> and you know what's funny is you're going to cut that trailer in for A Quiet Place. They're not going to hear anything. Like, There's some music. It's music, but that's it. There's some music. You're going to have to find the one where they talk. I'll find one. Yeah. Um... Yeah, a quiet place. So, or I could just describe over it like, <laughs> then they're watching out for the sound monster. He looks pretty scared now. Okay, so a quick little bit of background on a quiet place. A quiet place is directed by John Krasinski. I believe this is his first directorial. Yeah, no, his is first this... directorial effort. This a is feature his first... film. His fe- oh, a feature film. Really. I think he might have directed No, he has some, directed five things. But not movie? A feature but film? But not... Oh, he film? directed a... Oh, the Office The episode? Hollers, which is a movie. It was a TV movie. It was a very small movie. Um, so he directed some episodes of The Office, and he directed brief interviews with hideous men. So Another movie. No, these are movies. These are full-length movies. So he's done two movies before, but obviously they did not get as much recognition as he is now getting with A Quiet Place that he co-wrote with... These two dudes from Iowa, who named wrote it in college. Brian Woods and Scott Beck, um, yes, who wrote it in college, who started exploring it in college, and um, they actually had a very cool story. I was watched. We watched some behind the scenes stuff, and they had a pretty neat story about how they pitched this idea to studios because they knew there was so little dialogue that you know how were they going to be able to sell this? But what they ended up doing is one of them is a graphic designer, and so they basically in their script created um images you know shots i guess or you know maybe storyboards mood boards whatever um to go along with the movie that they were pitching and then um sometimes in their pages of dialogue would just have one word and they would make sure that that word was very powerful and obviously they probably had a lot of description of you know movement and action and stuff like that so it's kind of a cool way to have pitched a movie and I, I, I that's actually something original i haven't heard that they use like graphic design to kind of build to imagery. Illustrate and yeah, I mean get that's, their point across. that's a really cool thing that I, I wonder it will be f- interesting to see more people do. Like if you have your own like mood board for your story, if you storyboard your movie before it even gets made, so you can almost kind of like read it out to somebody. Like or I mean not read it out, but like show them visually like what you're going for. That's kind of a cool thing. And Duke is scratching himself wildly. Is she McDuke? Is she McDuke? Can you be free of your <laughs> I know Duke. It's time for a commercial. Great idea. Check us out Mondays on Radiate.fm. Listen to me and Danielle talking about movie reviews and Star Wars and Kylo Ren's nipples. Oh my god. And the Love Shack theme song. Well, it's not a theme song, it's just a Love Shack song by the Beaver Teachers. But we're going to talk about all those things sometimes on the Thundercast. Mondays, Radiate.fm. Tweet us at Thundercast or at Thunderblog. And we're back, because Duke's neck was so itchy. <laughs> Commercial for Duke. Commercial! Well, I was just talking about how the, who, the, who the movie was made by and... And and some and how they pitched the movie. So now we will get into the movie. So um, it stars Emily Blunt, uh, John Krasinski. So who directing are and like, acting, totally like uh, I know who are like super married like, together, have kids, and cool. have two daughters. Um, it also stars um, Millicent Simmons, and she's significant because she is a a deaf actress, and she does play deaf um, in the film. A deaf character. A deaf character. Thank you. Um, in the film, and um, yeah, I mean that's pretty. She, I, apparently, she was scouted from another film that she had done. It was kind of like a breakout role, and um, it was very cool because John Krasinski pushed for a deaf actress. He did not want to fake deaf. He did not want to have somebody who wasn't deaf do the role. He really pushed to get somebody with um, you know actual deafness, and then she had the ability to kind of help teach the other actors sign language on set. They had a sign language interpreter. Um, they really did kind of go um, do the right... Well, it's not even go out the go all the way. No, they did the right thing. I hate I hate saying that they went out of their way because they didn't go out of their way. They did the right thing 
to make well, the movie they authentic. Went through the effort. Yes. You know. But I mean, we shouldn't be rewarding. I, I feel like I, I'm just saying it was good that they did it, and it's impressive. But it's like let's not make it feel like they're superheroes for doing the right no, thing. Well, like, they're, they're good. I'm just saying they went they the did, extra they mile. Went the, they did. They they made the effort. Yes. And um, it's it's very cool because it it adds a level of um, authenticity. So the plot, the basic plot is this, very simple. There are, uh, oh, and I guess uh, this is the time to talk, say spoilers, because this no. review, no, well, you want to do spoiler free, do spoiler free, and then go spoiler. Okay, sure. So, so then your reaction to the movie. So I guess okay, I'll give my reaction to the film. Um, it's exciting. It's thrilling. Uh, it ha it feels unique, um, and so anything that feels unique obviously just feels exciting immediately when mm -hmm. you feel like you're watching something that like you haven't seen before, um, and you know it is. I, I will say that sometimes the kind of pastoral look of the film, the word of the day, pastoral, because we used it earlier. Um, the pastoral look of the film does, I think, Stephen like call, them, call them uh, hipsters. It's the, it's the, the hipster apocalypse. The hipster apocalypse. Um, because, yeah, I mean, really and truthfully, I will say this. Some of these sets and the way they dress, I, I was kind of like, it's not so bad in the apocalyptic yeah. world, man. Like, they have canned foods. They have all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, yeah. Good like, thing I took that pickling course at the community college. <laughs> So it you is, told me it would never it, it come in. It does sometimes feel a bit like, you know, you walked into a, a communal garden. Uh, I mean, a commun like, you know, like you walked into like a, a, a hipster's paradise, like a, a communal hippie garden, commune, hippie yeah. commune um, sometimes. So... No and, shoes, man. Let's make noise. <laughs> We're going so noseless now. It, it does. No, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it is, it's sometimes it's, it's, I guess what I'll say is it's excessively, sometimes it's excessively pretty, which is it's actually, kind of beautiful. it's beautiful cool. because it juxtaposes the kind of horror of what's going on, but yeah, like I guess for some people that might be a little bit jarring. Um, but it's also, it, it plays to like the idea of, you know, it being a quiet place, you yes, know, it's exactly, no, it's, it has a multiple, time to it has a multiple meaning, yeah. You know, animals scruffle and exactly. the, we, yeah. and the wind. You know, we that's what the movie's about. Exactly. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was a really good movie. Um, I think that, you know, obviously this movie is aiming in a very narrow target. Yes. So if you see this trailer and are resistant or are brushing up in any way to the very concept of a movie where you have to be quiet... Or you're gonna die. <laughs> you're probably already too loud to enjoy this movie. Honestly, to so me, I I actually felt it. I actually felt um, when I first saw the trailer, I wrote I was about to write this movie off because I'm like, the minute you fart, it's over. Yeah, it's over. And what's funny is there actually was an article about what if you fart, and then they had John Krasinski explaining, well, you can fart into a pillow, and I'm like, but you can't control every fart. But I actually... Then you should have put it in the movie, John Krasinski. I actually think... You should have put the move, the moment where they're like, oh no, dad's gonna rip one. Quick, get him the pillow. I actually, the pillow. I actually think that... one into a pillow. Well, I actually think that the movie does explain away the it farting. Um, we can talk about that in the spoiler review um, part portion of this review. But I actually do think that they cover their bases on that one. Mm. So... We'll talk about that now. So going if into you're the into, spoiler If you're review. into a very tense thriller with uh some sci-fi aspects that feels fresh and you're into um you know just a fresh different sort of horror movie and you can shut up for like an hour and 90 an, an hour and 30 minutes <laughs> then a quiet place is a movie the vundicas thinks you should check out yes uh and now a song that tells you we are entering a zone full of spoilers Spoilers, spoilers, these are the spoilers. Shh. Spoilers. Quiet Place spoilers. So, A Quiet Place is about... Uh, well, it's interesting because the movie actually never goes too deep into their, like, actual personal character life backstories. Like, we don't know if these people were 
We obviously know they were, to a degree, farmers. You can glean... No, there's okay. lots of things you can glean. So, okay, quick... I mean, the quick plot is... Family people, surviving. People, people live... Monsters came, uh, apparently from outer space, caused drama. People have to survive. That's it. So that's, bas- that's the basic plot. So it's a man versus nature monster man protecting his family you know versus... man, yeah exactly man versus nature man versus monster whatever movie um i think that you can definitely glean some some pretty solid ideas from the movie first of all we know that where they are is their home yeah because it has all of their pictures okay. um family heirlooms and stuff like that um we can glean that we can glean that these so these people did live like this um that's what's kind of really I actually think is impressive about the movie is that they have an, a lot of attention to detail that I think when you start asking those, you know, always we ask those what if questions around movies. Well, okay. why are these people over they here? They do why a lot of expo- exposition through production through, design. Through, exactly. And that's always really impressive when people do that. So you already, so you, so when you're looking at this and going, how could this family have survived? You see, okay, well, their daughter's deaf. So they already know sign language. They had an advantage. It, it had an advantage in the first place. They could communicate silently. Um, they probably were used to being quiet because, you know, like this girl is deaf. Like you know, they're used to they're used to that. I mean, I'm not saying they didn't make noise because they have two mm-hmm. other kids that obviously made noise. But I feel they like they didn't build their lives around. Yeah, and also just dance party just the very the idea of the kind of play on the word of uh, play on the phrase a quiet place. Obviously, it's meant to represent where they are, which is Iowa, and also what they have to be, which is quiet in order to survive. So obviously this place, you know, maybe is a very, is kind of a slowed down lifestyle, so they don't have a lot of talking and rushing around, and, you know, they live kind of languidly. Um, you sense that they have community um, because um, at one point they have kind of a beacon thing that they do with the other neighboring families where he lights his fire on top of his... Um, grain silo and he watches other people do it and so that's, okay. that's kind of a really beautiful thing because you sense because you get the sense that they actually do care about their neighbors they're trying they're trying to figure this out it's just every, but everyone has to be on their own they can't congregate because it's they like can't communicate. it can't communicate and it actually makes it more dangerous like the more people together in a group the more dangerous it is um and honestly the movie has a brilliant first 10 minutes and I think with any horror movie, if you can do a brilliant first ten mm-hmm. minutes, any movie really. If you can suck but, some, if you can suck but them especially in, get them on the hook. if you can suck people into a, a horror movie, meaning that you can get them scared in the first ten minutes, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. Every story should be able to suck you in within the first five to ten, within the first minute. But a horror movie really should like scare you. Mm-hmm. In the first ten minutes, like something to unsettle you, something to kind of make you feel like okay, something isn't you know totally normal, something isn't right. A good movie to bring that up is Conjuring. The Conjuring has like one of the best horror intros ever because the they Annabelle have intro. Annabelle. Like mm-hmm. they have that that thing that is an intro so good they did a whole movie about it. Exactly. They they, they have a, they have the I'm getting shivers just thinking about the first time it's that movie because they have they establish the two characters that we're going to follow the you know the 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 De- DeFeos, the DeFeos, yeah, they have, um, they, they focus, they have this really creepy, like, you know, kind of like, oh, the dog, you know, like, you think, oh, blah, 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 and then they just get the cold shock of horror placed upon them when they're like, you should never have fucking talked to that fucking doll, you should never have fucking bought this doll, like, it's so good, so Quiet Place is definitely there, because the On first, that level. the first ten minutes is tragic and terrifying at the same time. So in the first ten minutes, um, these this family have three children, um, a little boy, a, a middle child who is a, a, also a boy, and their eldest who's their daughter, and they're in a store. Um, they've established that the little boy is, I mean, the middle boy is sick. He needed medicine. They had to come here to grab something from the pharmacy. You know, they're in a small town. They have a small pharmacy. Emily Blunt to work is with. like very delicately like moving around pills yes. like they're bottles of dynamite yes like, I'm ready like to go you off. already i mean it's just you know, the great tension is what, already... and, and what what a really beautiful thing happened in the audience we want you to go see this at like 10 in the morning in miami now miami if you know miami people they are not known for being quiet this is not a quiet place 
there are many uh, people from the Caribbean here, from Latin America, mm-hmm. Latin Americans and Caribbean people tend not to be quiet people as a, as a whole, um, you know, individually, yes, as a whole, culturally, not really known for quietness. Um, so, uh, you know, we're thinking, oh God, you know, I was, I already went in there going, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get upset with people because I, you know, to expect mm-hmm. anything. And, you know, and then he had... And my, my friend who saw it opening yeah. night told me to, like, don't buy food and, like, yeah. be careful of sitting next to people with food. So, of course, Because they'll we take go you out in, of the movie. Exactly. But they're chewing. So, we go in and there's a guy with a big bucket of popcorn next to us. And we're like, oh, crap. And the whole movie is basically full. Um, which is very strange at 10 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Saturday for that but movie. But as it was the weekend, it was very exactly. strange. Yeah. So, but what was amazing was, as the movie started... You could hear people settling down and getting quiet. That is, I mean, and that to me that the was of the power of the great. <laughs> yeah, that was the power of great cinema because the, it's like you. The tension was so wrought in the first few minutes of the film, even before they got to the tragic incident, mm-hmm. that people could sense like, oh, I should be quiet. Mm-hmm. Like you could, like you could see people chewing. People started chewing quieter. They weren't picking up their popcorn like this. People didn't open bags of candy. Yeah. They didn't, like, one cell phone went off and they shut it off, like, right away and they walked out. People give... weren't, people weren't whispering. People weren't talking. The, move, the movie gave people a reason to shut the fuck up? Yeah, people, it, the movie really gave people a sense of, like, okay, but I have to be quiet like these characters. And, and see, some people ask us a lot, like, why do you guys still go to the movies? Because when we complain about people who talk and people who are rude, they're like, this is why I don't go to the movies anymore. But, like, Steven and I, like many people who love film and want to make film and do the, there is a power to cinema. There is a yeah, power it's, 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 to it, sitting in it's an amazing audience to sit in the crowd and and they're and all feel into everyone the movie. reacting yes, to it. Yes, exactly. Like it obviously yes, it sucks when you're in a movie and not everyone is into the movie, so they want to ruin the movie for you. But it is that much more amazing when you have a movie where the audience is just all in on the concept, like. Obvi- like we're excited to see Avengers Infinity War because people are going to be hyped mm-hmm. so people are going to be and that's the other thing too the more hyped people are to see something the more like respectful they are of it to a degree um, no to, yeah, to a degree but no but, for, but yeah like the more respectful they are of the movie um, you know and then obviously as time goes on in the, yeah like when we went to go see Avengers 2012 we actually saw it like um, um, I think it was two weeks or a month early Yes. Before it came out in theaters. Yes, we did. And we got into a sneak preview screening. Yes. Our friend, um, my friend Adrian and Shikara gave us tickets. Thanks, guys. That <laughs> Yeah, totally. And that theater at Dolphin Mall, by the end of the movie, as the Chitauri are beaten back, I could feel that whole theater like stand up in yeah. unison yeah. and roar and yes. cr- clap as the Hulk freaking punched yes. alien snakes yes. out of the sky yes. and shit. Like... That type of like visceral power, reaction. Yeah. It was like we were at a fucking like football game yeah. or something. And in I the felt theater, that you know? I felt that in Star Wars as well. I feel that in Star Wars as well. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because even even for The Last Jedi, which was so divisive for so many people, I watched that movie eight times in the theaters and I never had people making getting angry making shit i think one movie there was a kid that talked there was a kid that was talking but he was talking because he was excited he wasn't talking because he was bored he was talking because he was talking about the movie Mm -hmm. and he was really into the movie and i like every time i went with kids kids especially would be like oh ray and kylo like they were really into the movie and so yeah even even a movie as divisive as the last jedi i never had some jack off fanboy pissing on it now I kind of worry about the next one because they're already so angry that no. I'm worried that they're going to go in and they're trying to ruin it. No. To which I say, bring it on, bitch, because I will bring a taser and I will fucking tase you to hell. Anyway, moving on. Um, but yeah, no, I love when... I will tase you I will tase hell. you to hell. I, I love movies that... Like, I love when movie experiences like that, which is why I don't like to throw away the cinema, which is why I like to sit in a dark room sometimes and let a movie take me over and watch it on the big screen and really enjoy it like it i think it's sad that we've kind of losing that because of you know because people don't want to deal with it or it's too expensive i i I think that like i think that if 
the you know the theaters treated movie going like it was sacred mm-hmm. people would hopefully more be more into going you know and i understand why you know people are doing it less and less i mean obviously it's it's a lot easier to just click a button and watch something in your home versus watching mm-hmm. it in the theater but frankly and it's hella expensive the reason yes. why we want it 10 in the morning is because it's five dollars the yeah. theaters the, the the tickets half price mm-hmm. you know what i mean why, why not it's it's very painful because it is it's hella expensive and and honestly unfortunately in the major movie theater chains it feels like they they people that work there you know they're underpaid and they're overworked and they don't care you know they're 16 year old kids and they're not given any they're not really given any sense from their management like hey make sure people aren't fucking acting a fool Plus, like they tell you to come tell them but really there should be somebody watching over the movies like they used to. Plus, you know, uh, and uh, making sure plus, that people aren't acting like dicks. I don't feel like they take care of the employees the way no. they used to. No, not at all. Because back when I, back back when this back when fucking like this big like blockbuster movie started, right? I remember we went to go see Fellowship of the Ring mm-hmm. opening night. All mm-hmm. right, on a Thursday night in preview, midnight screening. Mm-hmm. We go to see it. The ticket taker, right? I go, oh my god, I'm so excited. Are you? Do you get to watch the movie? Have you seen the movie yet? And he's like, yeah, our manager let us watch it last night so that we wouldn't get spoiled when people started watching it. Mm-hmm. Cut to us watching The Last Jedi and somebody, after The Last Jedi's been out for two days, saying they've been working nonstop for two days and they haven't had any time to see the movie and they've already had everything spoiled because yeah. they've been standing in the lobby and as people, people walk like, out, yeah. like, you know? That's, you know, and obviously this guy got a job in movie theater because he yeah. was into movies. He wanted no, to see yeah, movies. No, it, yeah, it, I, I really feel like, it, it, you know, they love to blame streaming and they love to blame, but, like, frankly, when something, when something, like, bigger and scarier starts to take over because of convenience or whatever, your solution shouldn't be to give the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Your solution should be... How can we make... And, and some theaters are doing that with, when they add them to food and alcohol. I know that's how they're trying to get people in the theaters. Which I think is a good concept. But also, I think just the preservation of people's movie-going experience is something powerful, we'll too. Go a long way, yeah. Why does Alamo Drafthouse keep having franchises being opened? And people inquiring like crazy about opening franchises of Alamo Drafthouse. Alamo Drafthouse says if you talk or text, you get kicked out. No refund. You get two chances, and then that's it. If they have to come at you, I think, the third time, they kick you out, they don't refund your money, and if you send them an angry phone message, they will put it on an advertisement. I, I mean, you know, I really just... I feel like, you know, that it's not... Yes, you can sit there and go, oh, is that bitchy? No, but it's trying to preserve other people's movie-going experience. You know, like, people want to be able to, in, to process something and enjoy it and, like, sit in a dark room. And that's the other thing, too, is that... People like to go, well, I can just watch it at home. But what do you do when you watch a movie at home? Do you sit still you and watch it and watch phone. it nonstop? Exactly. You're on your phone. You get interrupted. You get interrupted. You don't turn the lights off or you fall asleep or your kid bothers you or you have to pee and you just you like, well, I just get up and pee. Text, you get a random text. And so to me, like, you're not really sitting down and enjoying a movie. You're not going to get sucked in the same you're way. You're not getting sucked in the same way. Experience. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it really is different. And I, and I know a lot of people don't respect it, but then there's a magic to sitting in a dark room and watching a movie. This is how they were meant to be seen. This is how they should be seen. And I mean, the state of it is sad because there's a lot of movies that, you know, you have to decide what movies do I want to... You have to decide nowadays. Mm-hmm. What movies do I want to spend the money on? What Which ones do I don't? Because it's become so expensive yeah. that you can't see every movie in the movie theater like you want to. And you know, that movie I'm going to see on HBO, that movie exactly. I'm going to see here, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. you can parse out, how am I going to watch this movie? How am I going to watch mm-hmm. this movie? And, you know, yeah. But anyway, so, like, we had a very magical movie experience with A Quiet Place. The first mm-hmm. five minutes, the first two minutes, people got very quiet. And the movie establishes... The very scary, tense world that we're and living the, in. And the movie never is, like, just totally quiet. Like, there's always ambient noises. There's yes. moments where things get totally quiet because yes. it's it's accentuating that the deaf character yes. is, you know, oblivious to what is they going play, on. They play very well with sound design. Um, so, like, the deaf character... Exactly. Whenever they focus in on, um, on the daughter, um, she... Um, I, don't, I, I don't know people's names off the top of my head. Whenever they focus on the daughter... 
when when it's on her perspective everything gets super sw- silent because she is deaf she can't even hear the ambient mm-hmm. noise um and i mean it, it just plays beautifully with that kind of idea in the sequence that is so harrowing um so basically this this part of the movie where the little boy gets killed you know is really like it, it's such a brilliant way to start this movie they started it with tension in the first place. We obviously know, okay, these people have to be fucking quiet. Mm-hmm. Like, they can't talk. They There's a moment when this little, the, the youngest little boy, who's like four or five years old, picks up a toy and it makes noise. And the, the look of terror on the father's face, which is like, don't make sounds. Mm-hmm. Like, he takes it, he puts it back. And then the daughter gives it back to him, not realizing her mistake. And it's just, you see... I, I think there's like the the images burn in my brain of when that toy turns on and the daughter can't hear it so she can't turn around and react in time mm-hmm. to try to get the kid and then the mother all she can do is just like Quiet quietly scream Hi. we're on express elevator to hell going down two one mark <laughs> So what topics do we talk about on the Vundercast? We talk about whatever we like, but mostly we talk about pop culture. We talk about Star Wars. Mira, who's Snow White? She's supposed to be some kind of consultant. Apparently, she saw an alien once. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. Movies we've seen. Don't lie. All we talk about is Watson. aliens. Oh, yeah, right. All we talk about is aliens. All we talk about is bringing things back to Star Wars. <laughs> All we ever do is bring things back to 1997. Don't fuck around. Yeah, I guess he's right. He's sawing his phone out. Your face. Stop sawing us out, Steven. Stop telling the truth. Danielle, you are not alone. Neither are you listeners. Mondays at radiate.fm with the Vundercast. Chewing. We're home. The Vundercast, which is on Mondays at Radiate. Hey, Danielle. Yes. Co host of the Vundercast, co workers. Mm-hmm. How many nipples does Kylo Ren have? Well, only two, but they are glorious. And to find out how glorious they are, tune in Mondays, Radiate.fm. Ray Love, all year long, till episode 9 comes out and beyond. Check it out. I am the ultimate badass. Yes, guys. State of the badass art. <laughs> you do not want to fuck with me. Hey, Radiate listeners, you should tune in to us on TuneIn. Because the podcast is also there. You should stitch yourself to us on Stitcher. Because we're down. And if you want to Google Play with us, our podcast is also on Google Play. But me, I, I just use iTunes to subscribe to my own podcast. Great! That's just fucking great, man! Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man! You finished... Man. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? And we're back. What's up, Vunda audience? So we've had some technical difficulties, and uh, unfortunately, we did a whole like hour on top of what you just heard, where we talked so in depth about all of the plot details and moments and you know, story elements that titillated us and excited us in A Quiet Place. And we told all the most hilarious jokes, and you will never hear them because uh, our beautiful Tascam podcast machine did not have enough battery power and died upon it died on us. what you're hearing. So this episode is going to get cut short. Yes. Um, and this is gonna... the grand finale to the Krish <laughs> slash Quiet Place episode. We'll probably talk more Quiet Place stuff maybe next episode if it comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, But we recommend you see A Quiet Place for yourself. Enjoy the 
the, the work of John Krasinski and company. Yes. Um, go Highly check out Chris. I hope we get around to reviewing Chris 2, 3, <laughs> and whatever, Chris and Robin, whatever the next one is. I don't know if anybody ever cares that we're reviewing these movies, but I'd like care. to talk about I them. Exactly. It. Exactly. It's fun for me. Exactly. I love it. To talk about Chris's cool Matrix jacket. Um, this morning, as we woke up after realizing this podcast failed and going to bed grumpy, <laughs> um, just to give you all perspective on where we're at in the state of the universe, we are on the brink of World War Three, and Beyonce performed at Coachella last night. And Adam Driver was on a deleted SNL sketch last night. So go search those things out if you care. <laughs> World War Three, Beyonce, Adam Driver, in that order. Or wait, is it Beyonce? Adam World Driver. War III. No, no, World War Three. Then Adam Driver. Or no, Beyonce, Adam Driver, World well, War Three. Well, the Adam Driver sketch never actually came out, so I guess that gets back a Yeah, so Beyonce. And it isn't even that funny. So Beyonce, so. World War Three, yeah. Adam Driver. Sorry, Adam, you're underneath yeah. World War Three. And Adam Driver's cameo is really the best part of that. Of the whole sketch. Is the best joke in that Just whole because they got Adam Driver to appear in a sketch in which he married a fish man and had a child named Crispy, the fish boy. So, I mean, that's pretty... Spoilers for SNL Who sketches cares? that don't get put out. Damn, disrespect. Really? Do you yeah, care? Yeah, really disrespect. Oh, the other thing we didn't get to talk about, they got cut off. Uh-huh. Which I can, I guess, rehash right now for this ending. For this which oh my, is our new segment, which I'm calling WWF Weird Wild Florida, which is going to be our Florida news segment. Okay? So there's a story that Florida crime has gone awry when a man who was in a traffic accident said that he could prove to the cops via v his dashboard camera that he was innocent and was not at fault in his traffic accident. So he signed over his uh, dashboard camera to the police, and the police reviewed the evidence that he submitted himself <laughs> to the cops to get him off of his traffic accident. Mm -hmm. And the cops, him having signed away all of this footage to them for their use, looked through it thoroughly. And found that he had committed a burglary and stolen from a jewelry store by beating a window in with a baseball bat. Wow. And recorded the entire incident. On his dash cam. And his dash cam. So they arrested him vis-a-vis -vis the <laughs> evidence he provided to them unwittingly. He incriminated himself. Could you imagine being his lawyer having to like yeah. be like... Clearly, my client is a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you, are we putting morons in jail now? Are we punishing people for being dumb now? We should give this guy an education. Can we get him a scholarship? He needs help. He needs counseling, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> my client is obviously an idiot. My client is obviously struggling. The struggle is real for my client, and uh, I, my I client would also like to submit a possible location for his jail, his mom's house. <laughs> he says they will be very strict with him. They won't let him stay up past ten. Please. It's very serious. They will not... They will put keep safe search on his computer. Yeah. No porn for him. Just Man, like prison. That's so funny. I don't even know how you begin to defend that guy. Obviously, you just have to get him, like, a plea deal or something. Obviously. Know? It's just like, my client, obviously... It's just like, plea him out. ...is having problems. Yeah. You know. You, you, that's, that's the take you do in your lawyer. <laughs> You're like, obviously, my client is not well. Obviously, my client... Well, people do not do this. Fucked up. My client may be into a thing called meth. Meth. In Florida, opioid crisis. Yeah, in Florida, a lot of these problems are due to, to Wild fun drugs, drugs like flaca and uh, meth. I don't know flaca. Is. Like flaca that. is that shit that makes you um, go crazy in the street. Yeah. So when you see people like wow, like wilding that's out, like flaca. dancing, that's the flaca. Yeah, I thought it was just they were really into waka flaca songs. <laughs> no, Whoa. that's the flaca. Um, I mean, we're we're the we're the state known for a guy that took bath salt and ate another guy's face. Which is, you know, it's oh, unfair man. because the only reason why Florida gets all this bum rap is because they keep their records open, yeah, open, so people can just. I bet there's way kookier things happening in stories. fucking Ohio right now. Like, yeah. if Alabama released all its records, it'd be like, holy shit! They'd be like, holy fuck! A lot of people fuck alligators. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Redneck man found with jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> 
this jaguar's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I married this jaguar. I feed him cocaine so he stays loyal. <laughs> <laughs> I married this jaguar. We've been married for 15 years. I, yes, I do have injuries on my penis, but I do not know why that is relevant to this conversation. Sir, that is an alligator inside of a Simba plush toy from 1994. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This is the love of my life. I don't need no visioning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Well, I think that's a good ending. Now that we've made fun of rednecks. Now we've made fun of rednecks. in your face. Hey. Honky. Oh, we just watched uh, Tom Segura's new special yeah, on Netflix. I that's relevant. That, that was very funny. It was called Disgraceful? Yes, called Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Which is actually the word of the week, thanks to... Mr. President. Disgraceful! Trump. Tom Segura is really funny. Yes, he definitely can sometimes be a little offensive, but I, I can't help but laugh at this It's still His delivery is so good. I think that's just really like what sells me on him. And he's funny. Like He tells really funny jokes. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good down. No, even when I don't want to explain comedy. Even, well, he's funny! Well, well, my thing is that <laughs> even when he has a mean punchline... Yeah. It's not, it doesn't feel like the way he's yeah. expressing it. It doesn't feel like he's saying it from a malicious place. But he also just it's has It's all from the place of just, like, yeah. trying to be funny. Like, yeah. just trying to be silly. And it also just, no, he just has this amazing way of delivering things with, like, these little, like, nods and, like, little Quirks, yeah. cor- like sound that he makes. And I'm like, that's so funny. Like, it's, it's hilarious. He's a funny dude. Uh, I have been your host, S. Steven. This has been my cohortress. Flaca, no. Flaca, no, cada I came here for two things. To shake my face and do flaca. And I'm all out of face. Uh, um, what? Do, <laughs> hey, man, when you're on flaca. Are you on flaca right now? Streams of consciousness. Uh, you don't even know what flaca is. Uh-huh. You didn't know what flaca So then how do I know I'm not on flaca? I guess we're all on flaca. Uh, for all I know, they put that shit in, like, the <laughs> toothpaste. When life gives you lemons, flock. Snort flock in your butt. <laughs> Eat a Tide Pod filled with flock. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't do that. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't do that. If it's from the earth, you can have it. Hey, I just want to... If it's not... By the way, kids... What? I just want you to know that don't let people stress you out by calling you like this stupid generation because you're eating Tide Pods because every generation did stupid things. It just, they didn't have the internet. I know somebody whose father, who I know now is like probably in his 60s, he used to put, when he was a teenager, and this was a long time ago, 60s, yeah, like 30, 40 years ago, he was a teenager, more. He would put bullets in an open fire that he had built with his friends and played Dodge the Bullet. <laughs> so, I just want you to know, eating Tide Pods is not, like, it's just par for the course, stupid people taking stupid risks. But, yeah, I just want you to know that, kids. Don't let any generation tell you that they were better than you. Because somewhere in that generation, some guy was throwing loaded, like, bullets. Real bullets. Real bullets into a fire, waiting for them to heat up to the point of explosion and dodging the inevitable chaos that could mm-hmm. consume them. So, That's all what we're saying. saying is, if you need a good cardio workout. <laughs> <laughs> bullets and fire. It's great. It's great for your reflexes. Great motivation. Yeah. Wondercast? Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.